We are gathered tonight on this Easter Eve, otherwise known as Holy Saturday. This day marks the end of the Lenten season, which began with Ash Wednesday, when ashes were placed on foreheads and the words were spoken, Remember, man, that thou art dust, and unto dust you shall return. We are reminded of our finiteness, our imminent death at the end of this earthly journey. Somewhat sobering, and yet a shift in the finality of our lives came on this day when Jesus, who lay in the tomb, did not return to ashes. An image of a rock came to mind as I thought of this day. In particular, the huge stone that sealed the tomb, meant to seal in death. The enormous weight of this stone speaking to the gravity of death. That weight is felt by his disciples, his followers, his mother, us. As we end this season of Lent, imagine standing before the stone that sealed the tomb, which holds him in whom we've trusted. A huge boulder of daunting size and shape, our hope for salvation solidly sealed, separating him that we love. He who was our hope in all of this left us confused. We asked the question, what is hope? Is it just wishful thinking or something that we say under our breath? Well, I hope so. That's not the hope that he spoke of. He taught us that hope was something to wait for expectantly. He was hope incarnate. Yet on that first Holy Saturday, he was gone, sealed behind a rock. Indeed, hope was hidden. With this image in mind, I'd like you to journey back to that day long ago when Jesus died on the cross. I invite you to imagine yourself standing next to his mother, his disciples, those whom he loved that wept and were overcome with grief as they see his lifeless body hanging on the cross. Let us enter the story. If it helps, you may close your eyes. In the distance, we see dear Joseph seek permission for Jesus' body to be buried in his nearby garden in a carved tomb in the hillside. Yes, so fitting that in a garden where life began, death should be overcome there too. Just days earlier, he had entered the city on a donkey with palm branches, praise and such a spirit of joy and exultation. They had shared a meal together only a few nights ago. And now, we are in hiding. We, his disciples, his followers, those who say we trust in him, believe in him, are hiding too. We cower in the corners, in darkness, alone, shaking, wondering, confused. How could this be? Where is he? I am alone and afraid. And yet his words come back to me like floating notes of a song. I will never leave you or forsake you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. But what do those words mean to me now? My hope is hidden. I can't see it. I don't feel it. I hear only silence in the night. I see only darkness, senses numb. Then, as now, the fear seeps into the cracks of my hiding places and covers me like a cold blanket. I cannot seem to shake it. 
Oh, that I would believe, could believe, his words of calm assurance, his be not afraid, but my hope is hidden. We stay tucked in our homes like tombs. Will they come for us and say that surely we knew him? An unseen enemy lurks who knows where. It's, it's in the air. Restlessness grows. Signs of despair show. Hope is hidden. Hope is hidden, hidden behind the solid rock, the huge boulder that sealed the tomb. Oh, how our hearts burned with hope as he spoke and walked amongst us. Those consuming doubts, worries, fears were held back as he spoke. His words that pierced our hearts with truth and promise that all would be well. And now he was pierced. How could it be? He who boldly proclaimed his goodness, his greatness, indeed the giver of life, has suffered death. Hope is hidden, hidden behind the rock. He who was called the rock of ages, who hid Moses in the cleft of the rock. I recall his words just days before as he rode into the city that even the rocks would cry out to praise him. Inanimate objects? Rocks cry out to praise him? Surely this God who can make rocks praise him can still my anxious heart. And yet, all hope is hidden. Now I invite you to journey forward, transitioning from that first Holy Saturday to this Saturday, indeed dated by his very life and death, the year of our Lord, 2022. As they gathered then, we are gathered now with a sense of loss as we recall his death. We bring our thoughts to this present night at this time and in this place. We are attuned to the anxious thoughts, fears, and questions left unanswered on that first Holy Saturday. One can only imagine how confusing it was for them back then. He promised he would never leave them, and yet he was gone. In truth, we often have the same feelings of fear, uncertainty, and a sense of hopelessness, even though we know how the story ends. Hope was and does often feel hidden behind a huge rock or obstacle of some sort. As I committed to share for this Holy Saturday, the idea of hope being hidden kept coming to mind. Little did I know that God would invite me into a season of feeling lost hope in a very real way. The loss of several loved ones, deep disappointments, and a sense of weariness set over me. I entered a time of, of grief and my hope felt hidden. I believe God wanted me to experience this before sharing this with you. It's not a comfortable place to be. I wanted to push past it to the other side, the side that says, God, I know you've got this. My head knew this, but my heart wasn't feeling it. My hope felt hidden. And yet my sense is that God invites me, invites us, to fully acknowledge the realness, the fullness of emotions in life. Jesus did. Jesus experienced sadness and sorrow for the joy that was set before him. Tonight, we are in that liminal space. We wait in the darkness. We wait for the stone to be rolled away and the light of the world to stream out of the darkness into the dawn of a new day. That fragile, fearful hope replaced with the realness of a risen Savior. 
the hope of heaven come down that we might rise from ashes to live forever with him in the company of loved ones in a place beyond imaginings. Oh, how we long for that day. But on this day, as it was the first Holy Saturday, we feel the weight of our losses, our disappointments, our misgivings, our fears, our hopes that are hidden. Oh, that the darkness be dispelled by the light of his resurrection love and illuminate our hearts anew. Hope no longer hidden. It is coming. At the dawn, we will celebrate hope has risen. But for now, we wait for it in silence. In this quiet stillness, I invite you to take a few moments to ponder where your hope may feel hidden. Where do you find a sense of hopelessness? Perhaps you feel hopeless at what's happening in other countries, in our country. Perhaps you feel hopeless regarding a family member who you are at odds with or who has brought you deep disappointment. Do you feel hopeless in the uncertainty of your life, questioning what you are doing and why? Or are health issues feeling so consuming bringing discouragement and a lack of hope? Do you feel the weight of deep disappointments that things are not as you thought they would be or hoped they would be? Or perhaps there's something else that comes to mind. As you came in tonight, You were given a rock. I'd like you to hold that rock in your hand and consider the weight of that rock. This rock symbolizes two things. It symbolizes the weight of those things you feel a sense of hopelessness about, those things that weigh you down. Spend some time to ponder those things. And as you leave, leave these things behind, your hand and heart unweighted, no longer held by you. Second, this rock represents the tombstone. As you place your stone, Remember that the huge stone which sealed the tomb was rolled away by God himself. He has pushed back the darkness, giving way to radiant light. This represents his invitation from darkness to light, from death to life. And with the new dawn that awaits, hope is no longer hidden. Tonight, as you leave the sanctuary, take some time to ponder this and leave your rock at the foot of the cross.